everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I wanted to do a video on this Horned Moses Mandela effect. I've known about this for many years, and that doesn't mean that it's not a Mandela effect. It just could be one that's not a Mandela effect for me personally. But I think this has to do with not knowing ancient religions and just not being aware of other information just because you haven't seen Moses with horns doesn't mean that he's never had them now this video here I believe was made well six hours ago and this was four days ago this here I've seen some questionable videos from this person it's like because they haven't seen something it's a Mandela effect and you know they're like claim to be this woman claims to be an expert on the bible it's like she's all 1100 pages of it she's like has memorized from the way she speaks i mean she perfectly knows every word of the bible from the videos i've watched and so anything that changes she she knows that it's it's different from her memory because she knows the bible well she does this video and says you know she didn't even know that Michelangelo had done this statue of Moses depicted with horns 500 years ago or whatever. Well, if she never seen it without horns, how did she, if she never seen it, how did she know that now with horns is a Mandela effect if she never saw it before and it didn't have any horns? So anyway, um, I just wanted to go into this a little bit deeper. Now, I'm not doing this video to offend anyone. I think that we need to be open-minded and we need to look at a whole bunch of information as we're trying to figure out all of this Mandela Effect stuff. This is deep. This is incredible. This is just mind-blowing, reality-shifting stuff. And I think you need to look at a whole bunch of different information. I've been open-minded to researching ancient religions and trying to stay out of the tunnel vision of just one religion because I believe there's a common thread running through all religions and a lot of people will never see that because they're stuck in their tunnel vision that their religion provides. So I wanted to look a little deeper into this and hopefully I can make something here that's of interest to, you know, interesting to people and maybe some things you've never seen before. So let's get into this a little more. I wanted to play just a tad bit of this here. Is materializing in the natural as they're rewriting the Bible and I'm seeing this left and right and this is disturbing because we know that the horns represent Lucifer Baphomet the devil Satan call him what you will call him what you will right that's all the horns represent right no that's not right that's the christian image of the horns the horned god goes way back to pan to to the nature gods the stag gods the horned gods go way 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 before christianity so that's where a lot of that was taken from christianity took those older religions and just created their own image it doesn't say in the bible that satan was this horned god I believe it says that he was you know, one of the most beautiful angels. It doesn't say that he was a horn god. That was, you know, that came afterwards. But what I do know about these horns has to do with the moon. Because there's a lot of horned gods that, that have to do with the moon. So couldn't this have to do with the moon? You know, there's a lot of astrology in the Bible. This, you know, just, you got to be careful with this information where it's just, you know, I'm a Christian, and well, look here, uh, Moses has horns now. Look at this Mandela effect. I mean, this is evil. I mean, and, you know, Satan, he's causing all this Mandela effect. I, I, maybe, you know, maybe. But I don't think you can just run with that. You can't just grab that by the horns and just run with it. You know, no pun intended, but you know what I mean? <laughs> You, you got to look at a lot of information here. You can't just use tunnel vision when you're looking at this stuff. And I'm, I'm horrified with this one. And you should be too. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what I have to show you. Um, supposedly, 
This particular sculpture is considered by Michelangelo to be his finest and most outstanding sculpture. I've never even heard of it before. Uh, right there. I've never even heard of it before. Yet I know it's a Mandela effect and I'm doing a video here with 2,000 views on it. You're not able to rate it. I mean, I'm being critical of this person, but I've seen some videos they've done that, that I enjoyed. I thought were good information. So I'm not just saying, you know, don't ever look at this channel. I'm not putting down the person. I'm not attacking them personally. I'm attacking the information. The information is I've never even knew Michelangelo did this, this Moses depiction with horns 500 years ago. Well, then how do you know it's a Mandela effect? I mean, that's my whole point with this. So moving on. I wanted to point out here, October 18th, 2014, this is a video that I did on the Shemitah after my Blood Moon video, and I wanted to point this out. According to the Bible, Jews in the land of Israel must let the land rest every seven years. In Hebrew, every seventh year is known as a Shemitah, a word that means to fall, collapse, or wipe out. It also refers to a release. This ancient mystery goes back over 3,000 years to Moses and Mount Sinai. It is interesting to mention here that Moses was the leader of a lunar cult, as evidenced by many paintings and other works of art from the Renaissance period. Many people are not aware that Moses was often depicted having horns on his head during this time frame. If you saw part one of this... Many people are not aware that he's depicted this way. So... I don't personally think this is a Mandela effect. It could be. I could have seen the horns long ago or there are other people saw Michelangelo's statue, statue without them. And now they're there. I don't know. Okay. I'm not, this is nothing definitive. I'm just giving you a different perspective here. Okay. So here's another video I did. I was speaking to a Muslim woman at work. She was falling asleep at the desk. You know, it was, um, it was, the month where, you know, they don't eat from sunup to sundown. The word's escaping me. It'll come to me here in a minute. Ramadan. It was Ramadan. She's falling asleep. She's got to commute 30 miles to go home. And so I just was thinking, you know, that's an ancient thing. You shouldn't be doing this. It's dangerous to be doing it now. But anyway, that's my personal opinion. But she told me that they know Ramadan starts from the crescent moon. So I did some research. I came up with this video. This was uh, over three years ago. And as Ramadan approaches, the exact start date is determined by the sight of the first crescent moon. Now, I didn't know that, um, but when she said that, I thought of Christianity because I know that the holiest time for Christians is Easter, the resurrection of Christ. And one thing that I started realizing as a teenager was why isn't that the same Sunday every year? I mean, didn't he rise on up to heaven on, on the same day? I mean, every year, isn't it the same day? Well, no. I mean, how do Christians know when to celebrate Easter? Well, it happens to be the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the spring equinox, when the sun passes over the ecliptic. That's where the Jews get the Passover, when the sun passes over the ecliptic. And this was decided by the Council of Nicaea in 325. So the spring equinox, equinox means equal night, because on the spring equinox around March 20th, March 21st, you get the same equal um, light and darkness. Day and night are equal. But not only do Christians use the moon, to determine when their holiest day comes each year. But Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur in Judaism, one of the most holy days of the year, since the first day of any Hebrew month depends on the sighting of the first tiny sliver of the next waxing moon following a new moon, no one knows when Rosh Hashanah will begin until the next waxing moon is sighted. And the seventh Hebrew month has started. So here you got Islam, Christianity, and Judaism all using the moon to tell them when their holiest days are. And so I went and looked up Buddhism and Hinduism, and sure enough, 
they both mark their holiest days with movements of the moon as well. So I just thought that that was really... Okay, so I just wanted to show you some earlier research I had done and how important the moon was years ago. 